and three and two and one. Oh, where do we start? I was watching this video. Ah, uh, Chiefs of the Tower of Babel. Ah, uh, it's a really good video. I tell you, you know, video is good when you stop a video and you start looking shit up. A couple hours later, you remember you were in the middle of a video, right? Uh, so, I go over here, Lieber. All right, Libor Gebla Erin, the invade, the book of invasions, and this is about Ireland, right? The book of the taking of Ireland six times, right? And six times by six groups of people, and it tells you the sea. Uh, Ses air or the Parth Parth Ulan the Nimed the Fur Blung Fluidiladan and the Miles Milesian something like that. Uh so as this went on, uh found a lot of good information and the more that I li listened um more information that has to deal with the stuff we look at came up the miles hispani are the soldiers of hispania so this is one of the oldest names we're going to find for spain uh under mile hispani it tells Bev, you want coffee? Sure, thank you. Um, it tells the Irish myths of Mil Espene, or later Latin, uh, Latinized, Latinized, uh, Miles Eus, right? And you can see that the Eus is what is that uh, Roman suffix, right? So, and you see it's Latinized, showing you Latin is Rome. Again, it's Kittim Tuba, and their their who is their chiefs? Their chiefs are Edom because what did Edom bring in the land? All their riches that they brought and their cattle. So, uh, and again, they defeated who was there at the time, and that was uh, the Horites, and they left fifty children. That's that's. The Horites were erased, right? Uh, of course, Horite men still have the ability to find Horite women. So, I mean, uh, uh, the boys that were left of the Horites still have the ability to grow into men and then have uh, mate with women alone. But they're pro the percentages that they're going to create another Horite are very low. I tell you that. It's also interesting, right? The mythical ancestors of the final inhabitants of Ireland. So again, the final inhabitants of Ireland are still people that are the root of what we call the Spanish or Hispanic blood. Okay. It says the sons of Mile, who represent the vast majority of the Irish Gales, his father was Bile, son of Ryogan. And we go, you know, nothing's going to be said here that's of anything that's blah, blah, blah. So we go to Briogan. And uh, going to Briogan. Oh, uh, he's supposed to be the son of Brath, right? Which really doesn't matter, right? Uh, is uh, Christian history of Ireland and the Irish for the Gales. He's supposedly son of Brath, described as uh, an ancestor of the Gales purports to be an account of the Gales descend from Adam through the sons of Noah and how they came to Ireland. So this is a pretty good interesting thing, right, to find out because again, it, it, it goes from a chronology that again, we have the ability to understand and though the nations have robbed from us and stolen from us and made our books public trash, 
our face and our books mm, have to go through them now. It tells us that they spent 440 years wandering the earth, underwent a uh, series of trials and tribulations, eventually sailed to Iberia and conquered it. Uh, one of their leaders were broken, uh, found a city called Bri uh, Brigantia, and built a great tower. From the top of the tower, his son, Is, glimpses Ireland, the Gales, including some of Bergogan's sons sail to Ireland from Bergania and agree to divide it between them and the Thulula de la Dan, the Irish pagan gods who take the outer world. The outer world is the realm of deities and possibly also the dead. So that's underground. So other world, excuse me, not outer world, other world. Okay, so uh, here it says, Brigantia likely refers to a Coruna in present-day Galicia, and Briogan's tower is likely based on the Tower of Hercules, which was built at a Coruna, wink, by the Romans, or the Tower of Babel. So they're just, they're just saying that shit. The Tower of Hercules isn't even that tall. So, uh, we're going to go over here, the history of the Goths real quick, and this will sum up some shit for us real quick, because we've been introduced to the Goths and the Vandals and the Suebi as the tribes that uh, deal with the statue of Nebu Chad Nazir. These are the barbarian tribes that make up the mixed clay for the toes. All right, or the mingled, or but basically it's it's, it's the miri clay, it's dirty clay, right? Um, so history of the kings of the Goths, the Vandals, and the Suebi. Now I'm gonna say some shit real quick because if you saw yesterday's video, then you understand all this. The fallen angels came down they, with some women. They produced giants. Fallen angels were then imprisoned. And their punishment is to be chained up to watch your seed be destroyed. So as the giant appetite grew, they what kept putting their uh, seed back into man. For this, the women that were involved with the initial fallen angel, they were cursed to be sirens, creatures of the sea. So if they sit there and say their mother was a cow, See, I realized this last night. If their mother was a cow, they're not talking about a cow on land. They're talking about a fucking sea cow. Okay. An otter. Well, right? A fucking seal. These are sea cows. So, the women, they're turned into sirens. This gives you more births. This gives you the SLC 24A5. It says it's a positional cloning because that's how the scientists respect it. What if it's not a positional clone? What if, like, a fucking ant has a hive? There is a sea creature that acts like an ant and it reproduced a series of children, right? And they have the same gene. In their chromosome, they're calling that fallen angel gene positional cloning, saying it's stamped into each one because it's not coming from a man that walked on it, right? They don't have a DNA of it that matches any man. So they're just saying, ah, oh, something is cloned. See, again, man, this is evolution. You, if you've watched the channel for years, you've seen how this stuff started. You see we come down the way, and this is where it reaches. This piece being added, this piece being added, it forms a more pretty picture than what we started. We started with a bunch of scratches, right? And then now here we are. Bobby's ready. Thank you. You're welcome. So when we get into the history of the Goths and the Vandals, again, I showed you that the 
giants that were produced from this nature. The, the, the historians told us they have two rows of teeth. So when you go and you type in two rows of teeth, they want to show you over and over again children with two rows of teeth. They're showing you a complete picture. Because when the child opens his mouth and you can see the child's mouth, you can see the child's skin color. And it turns out the child's skin color matches the Vandals, it matches the Goths, and it matches the Swede. If you go to the Queen, the Queen says she's Goth, it matches him. If you go to these people say they're Spanish, and it turns out they say it's Latin history of the Goths, right? Written by Isidore. <laughs> And Isidore begins his history with a program, pro, uh, pro, excuse me, prologue. Lazarus Spanem praises the virtue of Spain. It is here that he invents the phrase Mother Spain. The rest of his work elaborates and defends the Gothic identity of unified Spain. So you see, the people that is controlling Britain are not. What we we're being told that they're fucking uh, Caucasians from north. That they're not. They have no relation to the Caucasians from up north. That are Iranians. Magog. They're goth. They're gothic. And, and it's telling you from Isidore, the year two hundred, whether the year's fake or not, their ancestor is telling you that they are the goths. Period. So, when you look at all these people that say that they're Spanish, all right? Now, again, Japheth was there, and then the Afro peoples came, then the darker people came, meaning the Hebrews. Now, with Japheth being there, and then you have the Canaanites, all right? So, if Japheth children, are dark and light and then you have this them claiming they are the goths so again if isidore who is spain is claiming this then why is Later in time, other people writing other shit. Unless they're trying to hide themselves. And we done looked at stuff like this for years, and it's never said that Spain is the Goths. I guess we just didn't go far enough back in history. So, when it, the Bible tells you that Gog, Magog, Mish, Rosh, right? And these are the people that have taken the new world. See, if the Bible gives us the information that Edom will be destroyed. Let's say Edom is the hidden ruler and taxation will be overturned and when they do this, that will be how they destroy Edom. When they go to destroy Edom, they will destroy Moab, they will destroy Israel, all because they look like. Right now, you can see that the governments are controlled except for in the islands by either Rosh, Mish, the Turks, the people that say that they're Turks today, but they're really not. The Goths, the people that are in England saying that they're Goths, the people that took the Americas saying that they are what, Goths. 
Again, the Hispane is the Spaniard. That's the people in Mexico. The Latin from these are Kittim. So they're from the same forefather. They fight with each other all the time. That don't mean one ain't going to subdue the other. They don't have it written that they will eradicate each other. They have it written that they will eradicate us. Then we'll be done. That's what they have it written. So this is telling us right now that the Goth is Spain, is the Spanish. And then Getica, I ain't going to Getica yet. But now, with all these videos, I wanted something unique. I wanted to find who is Turin and who is Luca. Who is the Shroud of Turin based off of and who is this Luca that the face is carved off of? This repeating image that goes to all churches. And so I don't think I don't think I found it. But if we're talking golf, I don't think I got it yet. I think I think I think I'm in a little patch of grass that leads to to the green. I think I think I'm like ten feet from the hole. But I think I'm still in the rough. I think it's been designed that the rough is right next to the green. But I'm still within 10 feet of the hole. And let us see who is the face that they're actually trying to get us to worship. Now, again, I don't think I'm right with this. I think this has, this is one of those things that has all the pieces. But I don't think it's right. And I'll tell you, I don't think it's right because of one thing. I was watching YouTube. And you know, they go into this, we believe the thousand years of Jesus has, has already happened. And by this, Revelation is still just a blueprint. Which means, if Genghis Khan is one of the pieces of the blueprint, there's three more. And of course, the final ones will be after Genghis Khan and closer to us. So that should be easy to depict. So I was watching this girl's video and I forgot what the video was. And the girl video was like, I believe in Jesus, but I think the image of Jesus was modeled off of one of the kings of Europe. And for the life of me, I can't remember, I can't find the video. I searched for about half hour last night. And anybody that's tried to search for a video, you know, putting a half hour into searching for a video, it's a long time of, was it this title? Was it his scroll? A, a lot of that back and forth. But I couldn't find it. But my memory decided, I will, I will throw you one, buddy. Uh, and it threw me the, one of the kings. And uh, my memory decided I would remember that one of the kings was the first king of Hungary. So when I type in the first king of Hungary, it tells me straight up his name was Stefan the first. And then I was like, wait, that's really funny because Stefan reminds me of that dude from Acts, the one that really had the power, right? And he was able to do this, and he was able to do that, and then they got together, and they and then they and they put him on trial, and they slaughtered him. And I thought that was kind of unique because you know when one thing that he has that even I have is the split in the beard. It seems to be this is what we're following in history with this because the pictures of Jesus, at least the ancient, at least the face of Luca has the split in the beard. And it's funny because once I started realizing this is what I'm looking for, like uh, I started seeing people that look like that's all another melanated person that had it. I don't always find people that have my beard. My beard's kind of unique. It's, it's, between, uh, the, it's between a point 
you know, if you if you brush it straight out, but if you let it do its own thing, it's gonna naturally split like this, and then you have no choice but to kind of curl it, you know. So yeah, you know, just kind of ran into somebody that kind of looked like me that had that too, and I was like, wow, uh -huh, okay. So <clears throat> so if we look at the face of Luca, right? You see, when you say you say face of Luz, Lucifer, this isn't some mystery anymore. The, the, even the algorithm knows exactly what they say. Well, why not click this? Right? And this is what they show you. So if we look for this before the TV show, I wonder what the algorithm would have gave us. Hmm? So, again, when we look at Luca, here's that split in the beard. And there, there was a lot of things that, uh, you know, I got on phone with Vincent. Vincent saw some stuff, one of these pictures. <sighs> There's a dove that's above him. I don't know. you got to find the right picture to get the one with the dove above him. You know, um, and the dove above Luca is very interesting because inside the, fa the the body of a dove, you can see a fucking reptile face. And when you can see the reptile face, uh, it comes from its belly. I don't, it'd be easier if I found this picture and then start talking about that. See, there's the dove right there. All right, so when you blow the dove up on the belly of the dove, there's the face of the reptile, and then it's got the wings, and the wings make it look like the reptile has this a frilled, a frilled look. And Vincent was like, you know, see, I can't do it. On the phone, you can blow the picture up, right? But that's not the picture. You can't see the dove in that picture, but it's kind of like that. There it is. Okay, this is it right here. And now, again, you can blow this up on your phone. All right. And you start to see all this. This isn't the image either because it's at another angle and it leaves a. Uh, the blah blah blah, a different horned look as the shadow. But right here, you know, I forgot when I record, my pointer turns into a circle. So within the circle, there is a pointed reptile face. You just have to be able to get the image up or a specific image of the exact same thing, and you see it. Even back here, you can kind of see it here, but it's more so out here. There's a there's an eyeball drawn on the post they're all nailed to. This belly, when you get the right image, and I'm sorry, I cannot present the image on the phone onto the computer. When you find uh, Obama Halloween. Uh, when he dresses up as a demon. With horns in his little silver outfit. Uh, come on, you guys, uh, you're purposely doing that. There. This is actually the image of the belly of a bird. I, I know it's hard to believe. But you just <laughs> if you find the picture, the face of Luca, you get the one with the dove, with the with the dove showing. It's this dove right here. It's off to an angle. All right. Let me see if it's just. Uh, 
Oh, sorry about the goat chewing today. I got these oat thingies. And I just can't. That's not it. No, it was, it was from the search. This is sixth, like the fifth or sixth one down. But I, I, can't, I can't necessarily find it. Uh, uh, there's not enough in that one. They say that was it. No, no, I thought it was one, two, three, five, six. I don't know which one it is. But I'm just trying to relate to you what we found offline while we were looking at this thing. Um, there was some other things too, but it's rather here and over there. Uh, the keys, that's right, the keys. Again, this is Luca, the keys, the keys to hell and to death, right? And then uh, I wanted to be like, you know, these are the Catholic church keys. They're always dangling in front of you. This is the keys to hell and to death. There's always only two freaking keys. So, you know this is the Dagon hat, right? They want to tell you it's to connect this three realms, right? They're not telling you the realm. This whole video, this whole video is to tell you, is to show you the realm. It's okay, so actually, we should just get over that real quick. Um, because, you know, this video doesn't have to be that long, it's, it's just exciting, you know, uh, when you get into, uh, what's really going on, it's going to go to the Fomorian Treaty, all right, um, so, I don't know which one I should just go into first, let's go to the Fomorian Treaty first, and we'll just explain it this way. So, um, I'm sure everybody's heard about the Thulu de la Dan. I'm sure, uh, because, you know, every time we go into this, we talk about Skip, uh, and how Skip went over there, and, you know, Louis uh, Gates Jr., he kissed Skip goes over there, starts talking about DNA, then he gets his DNA tested, and then he finds out. Mm, like you didn't already know that he's a uh, descendant of the, the Lula de la Dan. And uh, what the what they're, what they're going to tell you is uh, it's kind of funny here. Because I don't know, I don't think most people pay attention when they talk about this story. Is what they're saying is um, people went to Ireland and they came across monsters and a treaty was made so let's read a little bit about it and get some understanding so right before we get to that let's, let's just finish this out real quick so we had victor of tun nunya right um, then we had Kermit. Now, this is kind of important, and this is about, I'm going to read this whole thing. I'm going to show you that when all these groups were getting to Ireland, um, if they came across each other, none of them got along, all right? So in Irish mythology, Kermit, okay? Also pronounced Kermit the Frog, right? Uh, of the th the Thua de la Dan, right? It says was a son of the Dagda. Dagda was an important Irish god in mythology. One of the Thua de la Dan, and the Dagda is in uh, portrayed as an important father figure, a king, a druid. He is associated with a fertility, agriculture, manliness, strength, as well as magic, druidy, wisdom. He can control life and death. Whether okay, so that, that okay, so the Dagda is what a, is a uh, 
the son of Dagda and brother of Aid of Endius. All right. So it says he was killed by Lul. All right. Or Lug. All right. And he's the most prominent god. Of, uh, now, this is just the most prominent people. All right. And you just, just think of it that way instead of looking at this as gods or anything like that. Lug is portrayed as a warrior, a king, a master craftsman, and a savior. He's associated with skill, mastery, and multiple disciplines, including the art. So just. He's a jack of all trades. Just think of it that way for a moment. After that, he had an affair, right? He was killed after he had an affair with Lil's wife, Brosh, all right? So, Kermit, killed by Lil after he had an affair with Lil's wife. The Dagata cried tears of blood for his son, and later, while traveling with his son's body, in the east, you know where the east is, that's the Orient. He revived Kermit with a healing staff. Kermit's three sons, Mac Quill, Mac Shet, and Mac Greeny, whatever, avenged his death and went on to become joint high kings of Ireland. Another figure in the Dind Senshiz Conan Honeymouth. All right. And Conan Honeymouth is described as the son of Dagda, son of the King Dagda, and maybe the same figure as Kermit. So that really wouldn't make sense, right? And Conan was killed with a spear by a son of Conrad named Ferno Man or something like that, or a need rind or something like that. So I want you to see you're using this name Conan and all that shit, right? Now remember our Conan that we know about is Conan the Barbarian, and when they did something wrong, right, they crucified each other. So I guess we could just go over here and click on this and then Fiction. It's all fiction. I don't give a shit if I spell it right or not. So even in the comics they show they drew this. It's always been there. It is the barbarian way. Okay. Even in their video game, right, Conan Exiles. They don't even waste time with the X's. Alright. So don't think Conan is Jesus or anything like that. He doesn't have a beard. So just, all right. Now I'm going to go a little bit further. Now here's Brian. Now, Brian is a Gaelic mythology. And now Brian is going to be the shit because Brian has all the shit. He has the name of the Shroud of Tunin or Turnin by however you pronounce this, and if you start dropping vowels, you're gonna, I mean, yeah, dropping vowels, you're gonna get turning. And he just so happens, just like this child of turning, shares mm, family idolatry with the face of Luca, right? That's, just like we get this same shit here, we get the same thing. Tur Turianen, whatever his name is, names his first son Luke, and he names his second son Luke. And of course, there's a plot. All right. A name. In many extant institutional manuscripts of the old head, right? I don't know why they add an H there. 
Uh, I'm gonna get the information first before I display it, but the H, H is added might make for a king, but anyway. Uh, Brian is actually called Urar Rare, but the name has been embedded by the authors as Brian, which control, excuse me, conforms, and it controls the mind of the reader, it conforms with the name of an ancient text. Eugene O'Curry was working from a manuscript with uh, in his possession, and it gives the name Brian, but notes that Urar was an alternate or Brian. The plot, basically the tragedy of Brian's sons, right? Uh, the, the three set out to kill their father's enemy, Sion. Sion is the father of Lu. Wait a second, that's the same guy that was back here. Now you see how this is all connected here. So he's the father of Lu, one of the greatest of the Salua de Ladan, right? And Sion shape shifts into a pig to disguise himself but his brothers they decide differently they say we want to be dogs for this to go and hunt him so they find him they kill him they dismember his body and try to cover up their crime so again why in the past when they're just supposed to be fucking cavemen that can use witchcraft why would they try to cover up their crime unless there is an authority in recompense, Lou makes them quest all around the world, all around the known world, fetching magical weapons, which Lou plans to use in the second battle of Mach Tarid. And this is basically, it's the name of the two saga texts, the mythical cycle of Irish mythology. It refers to two separate battles in Connacht, the first in the territory of Turin, and uh, the second near Law Arrow in Sligo. Okay, and then it continues to say uh, the second battle, they succeeded in obtaining all that Lou demanded, but returned to Ireland badly wounded. They pleaded for Lou to heal them, but he refused. Okay, so says at least one version of the battle, excuse me, of, of this tale. Brian is clever and subtle, subtle one, and while his brothers Luchar and Luke Chara are bumbling and easily overawed by Brian. In this tale, the sons are sometimes likened to an Irish Argonautica. Now, if you know what Argonautica is, it's Jason and the Argonauts, all right? And so, think about this for a minute. Over here, under, excuse me, or was it Briogan? Is it Briogan? Which one is it? Uh, I just no, no, no. Up here, it's Brian and his three sons. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I think it's kind of unique. This is some of the history of the land again. Ireland's as far as France is, for as far as France is to to as far as Italy is. So this it's it's all within the same realm. Right to have themselves a false god, to have the false god be named Luca, to have these children of Turnin be called Luca, and it's kind of interesting. Um, the whole thing of it, because when you get down to it, it's almost like there is. It's it's almost like we are being taught to worship someone's whole family under 
And then you can look at it different names. You can look at it as Turn is a name, as Luca is a name. You've been taught Jesus. Um, when we go into the other stuff, you know, the, the Shroud had different names before that. When we go into the face of Luca, Luca had different names before they settled on Luca. You know, so Luca comes from Leobo, and Leobo is really just a story of the wolf of, of Rome, the uh, 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 Capitolino wolf. My oh, man, it's, it's all fucking game. I mean, at this point, you have to wonder, when, when does it matter when the truth is on screen? When I show you the exact truth, and it shows all the pieces led right up to it. Grandma, grandpa, great grandma, grandma, all these people. If we just say my family alone still died worshiping this false idol. Think worldwide. All these people died worse than this false idol. And then you're going to have to ask yourself at some point, what's it all for? You know what it's all for. It is for an action that took place before me and you existed. All this has to do with is fallen angels coming down and sleeping with women and saying, I hate men. We will destroy them. Now, if man has been given a promise, if you do, by my laws, I will take you to a new place as a reward. All the fallen angel is doing is stopping man from achieving his reward. If temptation is within man, then what is the power of the fallen angels? Don't they tempt us? But because we're programmed to what? To be programmed. They can easily talk us into destroying ourselves. They got kicked out of heaven. The first thing they did is, let's teach these guys swords so they can stab each other. Let's teach these guys root making so they can poison each other. Let's teach them divination so they can call on us when they want it. We've been taught. Huh. We've been taught evil. So we do evil. So, with evil people in control, they're not going to teach us the truth about anything. And this affects us all, even when we don't know it. So, the Formorians are a supernatural race of being in Irish mythology. Okay? So, they are often portrayed as hostile and monstrous beings who came from under the sea. That's, that's hell. Okay? Or earth. Later, they are portrayed as giants and sea raiders. Okay, so what's the difference if they started as giants? And since we don't see giants today, they became monstrous beings. All that nasty in a short guy, right, tends to make skin start folding on itself. And then you get hmm, strange DNA monstrous being enemies of ireland's 
first settlers and what opponents to Thulula de Adan. See, there the Fomorians are opponents to Thulula de Adan. But I thought Thulula de Adan were supernatural race. So are they trying to say two supernatural races came to Ireland and started fighting and that, and that no. They're trying to say the Danites came with some Egyptian magic and then these monsters came with real magic. But they write it up to be very ridiculous. And I can't, I can't help but to say things like this before I read silly stuff because, again, I didn't write the silly stuff. All right. Uh, okay. See, so, so again, through the, the other white meat, right? The other supernatural race. So again, it's two supernatural races. That's what they want you to believe. All right. However, the relationship with the Thule, Thuth, D. Thuath D is complex. Isn't that interesting? Some of the members intermarry and have children. The Fomorians have thus been likened to the Yoknar, hmm? the giant ice be beans. So when you watch Thor and he show you the ice beans, right? And the Titans, the giants. So you see what's going on? So one is ice giants and giants, and the other is creatures. That's what they're claiming, right? The Fomorians seem to have been gods who represent the harmful or destructive powers. You understand that. That's the book of Jashir when they mention, or excuse me, the book of uh, Jubilees when they mention Mestema. Okay, Master Mama. And the Most High opened a gate and put all the mel, uh, malevolent, the evil beings that could not be controlled easily, he put them in a separate realm. But Mastema started begging, please, please, can I have some power? Since you're chopping stuff up right now. And he gave one-tenth, something like that, one-tenth of these things. That's why we see a little bit trinkle here, trinkle there, when nine tenths are hidden away, waiting for everything to be complete. So, <laughs> it says that these one tenth that came up, the personifications of chaos, darkness, death, masked Emma, masked. Emma, like me saying Emily, is an angel, an angel who persecutes evil in the book of Jubilees. I don't remember reading it that way. Huh? So we want Jubilees real quick. Maybe I'll pause it again. All right, this, this is good enough. They won't tell me what chat. I think it's, I think it's 11. No, it's chapter 10, 10 and 8. So here it is written here, right here. <clears throat> and they considered him uh, like Satan, an adversary, but in Jubilees, he's more like a character who appears in the book of Job with the function to fulfill under God rather than Satan of later tradition. It's, never mind, it's just stupid how they're reading it, right? And that shit. When God is ready to destroy all the demons after the flood, Master Mama intervenes in beseeching God to allow him to retain and control one-tenth of the demons in order to exercise authority. And because they are intended to corrupt and lead astray before my judgment. You see what they're here to do? They're just here to fuck you up. You didn't worship God, so God set a trap for you. See, this is not a free ride. 
No matter how many times they teach you, you're just a creature, you're just going to fuck and produce and die. It's way more than that. Your father didn't teach you, and you had some children, and you didn't teach them. Now, you're punished for it. So, this is all about the truth. Alright? So, when people uh, play this game under the guise of truth, God gets mad and says, I'm going to crush it all. So... Again, the Fomorians seem to be the exact description of what Mastema asked the Most High for. Now, if you go into this information uh, about the invasions of Ireland, it will talk about who arrived before the uh, the first group arrived before the flood, right? So, again, when you read about Master Mama Mastema. It's going to tell you this is because of the flood. So right after the flood, Master Mama's got the authority to rule these demons and go up and taught men. And then they surface and then we get these things called Fomorians who have the same power, same abilities. <clears throat> so in Middle Irish, the race is usually called Fomori, individual members are Fomor, and Middle Irish, they are considered, excuse me, that's old in Middle Irish, and then Middle Irish, they just Fomorang, or Fomoroch, or Moresh, right? And it really doesn't really matter, right? Um, they appear in the Muir, now again, that is the real Moors. That is the nobility of Europe. This has nothing to do with the Moabites. The Moabites are the Moors. M-O-O-R. The M-U-I-R is the black nobility. This is why the black nobility, the Boule, call themselves Archeons, which is demon. Again, why wouldn't they just openly call themselves demon? Because that's an English word. In English speaking, you know what a demon is. English speaking, you don't necessarily know what the Archeon is. So they can call themselves demons right in front of you, and you wouldn't know the fucking difference. Now, it says, in the Irish version of the history of Britain, of Ninius, right? In English, they are called Fomorians. Or, okay, really? It's fucking repeated just over and over. So one's from under the sea. Period. Not the people of the sea. And you will see people like, this is not an attack on them or anything like that. You will see people like, uh, mysteries of the Middle East. You will see them call the Fomorians or the undersea ones. You will hear them say the people of the sea. They are not the people of the sea. Now you can understand if people see them coming out of the sea, they will say, well, that's the people of the sea. The people of the sea are Canaanites. The people that come from the sea are coming from the pits of hell. We need to make sure we understand. So you see, mer means sea. Just like moat means water. Or more, M-O-O, -O, right? Means moat, which is water. So, and the holy sea, which should be spelled this way, is spelled with S-E-E, -E, as far as you can see. The etymology is debated. The first part is generally Old Irish. Foe. Everybody knows what a foe is. It's an enemy. Meaning under a below. Remember, it means enemy. The meaning of the second part is unclear. The, the suggestion, one suggestion is that it comes from Irish myrrh or sea. Now, again, why would you, see, you know, uh, beneath, below is what they're arguing. Okay, so... You know, again, if foe means enemy, it's enemy of the sea. If foe means uh, under or below or beneath, it's enemy. It's it's what beneath the sea. 
And if the name thus means something like the undersea ones, this is the interpreta interpretation offended, oh, excuse me, offered by some medieval Irish writers. Uh, another suggestion that it comes from more big and great, it means something like the great underworld ones or undersea world, whatever. The third suggestion, which has more support among scholars, is a hypothetical Irish term for demon or phantom. Right. And again, more support. So why would they even write that other shit first if calling it a straight out demon is highly supported above anything else? Again, how many people because you usually read things and you glance and you go uh, and you move on. And what they're doing is they are in support of demons. So they're hiding it. Well, not really, but you just got to put all your effort into to find out it's just goddamn demons. Tartarzan, Tatessian, right? Don't want to say that's Tartarus, is it? Or an entrance to Tartarus? Because we already know Tartarus is the Taurus, the Taurus is a donut, the donut is a chamber, the chamber is hell. And they put the donut inside of a snake. A giant fucking snake. So hell is in a giant snake. What does a snake look like when he eats himself? It looks like a donut. This ain't that hard. It's, it's all fucking doodles on a piece of paper. Like like the most high built the earth doodling first and then found that scientifically the, what we've been taught to call science really isn't science. It's principles. This sketch holds the principles. And that is what we're dealing with underneath. It's a globe, right? It's a half dome. How can you hold dirt in? We don't deal with gravity. We already learned it's density. On top, we got a bubble. We're in an ant hive. We're sitting on a fucking shelf. He's living his life, driving his car. He comes into his shelf. He sits on his throne, a glass throne that no, no thing that he created can even get near. And he's got a chair with a thousand eyes. Don't you think he killed something and changed it into a chair? I made a, an, a beast that can see far. We call it an algorithm. He made it into a fucking life form before we even made it into a program. He made it into a chair. He sits on it. When he sits on it, his ass glows and you see green fumes everywhere. We call it the Aurora Borealis. He makes fucking fart jokes in the Bible all the time. He's got a sense of humor. Stop acting like he's going to squash you. Every time you've said goddamn and he ain't squash you. You ain't had a heart attack. You ain't had a seizure. You ain't had a stroke. He's hilarious. You see some of the creatures he, he made to kill us? Unless we have faith in him and he gives us the power to destroy them. The fucking things running around crawling on all fours with legs backwards. How is that not funny? Because it, it, it's, it's missing skin pieces? Who gives a shit? It's funny as hell. Think of when you learned about medical shit, right? And you were like, oh, they're going to cut into a body. Oh, they cut into the body. Oh, my God. He took all those pieces and parts and crafted them different ways until he saw what works perfect. And you can tell because nobody sits there and says, I'm going to put legs on backwards just for fun. But then, once he did it, why didn't he destroy it? Because he's got compassion. Just because you make a monster don't mean it's got to go into the trash. You just put it in the closet. My wife looks at me, I make so much shit that never leaves this basement. She always looks at me like, why the fuck are you keeping all this shit? 
Well, I fucked up when I made this one. I don't want to fuck up when I make the next one. With this one sitting here, I can always remember, hey, I fucked up. <clears throat> They're monsters. They're demons. That do not have the power of the jinn. They cannot phase in and out of material. They're hard flesh just like me and you. And because me and you are very fucking dangerous, they can breathe underwater to some extent to be able to escape us and to hide from us and to live in civilizations away from us. So that's why you deal with underwater caverns and they're on one side of it and you're on the other side to separate our worlds. And this is why you need to stay out of the fucking caves. And when we go down in mythology, there is a battle. Medieval mythology. Partholian says that his followers were able to invade Ireland after the flood. But the Fomorians were already there. Keating reports that a tradition that the Fomorians led by Sishishio Grisinchios had arrived 200 years earlier and lived on fish and file until the Partholion came, bringing the plow and the ox. So again, they were just living off the animals until uh, the knowledge of farming comes with man. Bartholion defeated all right, the monsters in the battle of Mag Itha. But all his people later died of the plague. And then came the Nimid peoples and his followers. Well, the Nimid and his followers, that's considered the Nimid people. Ireland is said to have been empty for 30 years following the death of, of the plague, but Namid and his followers encountered the Fomorians when they arrived. So there weren't any more humans, they were just monsters. So 200 years, monsters, then a war, then monsters poisoned everybody, and then it's monsters again. At this point, Scythian reports another tradition that the Fomorians were seafarers, from the Middle East, now you already know they came from the North, so that means that they started to move towards the Middle East, and this is why Mysterious Middle East has the reports coming in of the Sea People at that time, and they, dis what, what, descend from Ham. Fomorians were seafarer people from the Middle East descended from Ham. Now, you, you heard that. Okay. So now, I spent, I spent the beginning of the article saying that when you hear the people of the sea and the sea peoples and the people under the sea, don't mix them up. Now, right here, we have one line, one line. that says there is a historian that reports that these are just Hamites. Now, what is this monster element? Were the Hamites fucking monsters? Because even though this says that they were Hamites from the Middle East, that does not take away all the monster shit that they said was happening before. Now, the first people... Parthulio comes, the needs come, all these people are going to be wiped out. And then once you get monster versus monster, which I presume isn't really monster versus monster, I believe it's the Sea Peoples of the Middle East versus the, sea, uh, the Danites. And all of them are coming from relatively the same area or at least through the same area meaning they're dealing with the same creatures, a lot of the same knowledge, uh, or at least the ballpark of the same knowledge. 
if they're coming from the Middle East, they're dealing with the witchcraft that's being learned. Again, all of a sudden, wizards and shit just disappeared. Absolutely not. So you have wizards, you have witches, all that stuff is all moving to the west, to the coast of Ireland, and they're limited themselves there because they're telling themselves that's the edge of the world. <clears throat> now, it says right here, Sientin or Sietin uh, reports another tradition that the Fomorians were the seafarers from the Middle East. So again, it's more likely to say that they were mixed in with them. Some of, it's not fair to say all, right? Some of the descendants of Ham. Nami defeated them in several battles, killing their kings, Gon and Sengon. Now again, Gon and Sengon doesn't sound that far from Asia until you say, this is supposed to be Ireland. And then you're kind of like, wow, that sounds like Asiatic names, don't it? Okay, so, but two new Formorian leaders arose, Khan and son of Faber and uh, um, who lived in Conan's tower on Troy Island. And they're giving you a county and everything. County Denegal, right? So, wait, the death of who? Province of Ulster. I don't know where I saw death. Anyway. anyway, okay. So, and Mork, son of Della. Note the first generation of the Figborn were also said to be sons of Della. All right. So, excuse me. Fur Blog. Fur Blog is the fourth group to come to Ireland. So, the Nemed are the second group, right? And the second or third group. Who gives a shit? After Nemed's death. Conan, the Fomorian, and Mork, the Fomorian, enslave his people and demand a heavy tribute. Two-thirds of their children, grain, and cattle. Now, when we go over here to the history of Ireland or the invasions, they write it a different way on the Nemed. All right, so the Nemed come in and... They set out from the Caspian Sea in 44 ships, but after a year and a half of sailing, the only ship to reach the island is Nemez. So when Nemez people leaving the Caspian Sea show up in Ireland, on board is his wife, his four, his four chieftain sons, and others. During their time in Ireland, the Nemedians cleared 12 plains. They built two royal forts. Four lakes burst from the ground, and they win four battles against Fomorians. So when they clear the, so imagine when they clear these uh, these plains, they pull the trees out. The trees are sucking the water out of the ground. Once the roots are removed, then you got holes between the water, all right, and 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 the topsoil. So the pressure is just going to make the water rise, and then you're going to have each each derooted tree is going to be a drain hole and each of those drain holes are actually filling up those valleys and then you're going to get some lakes right same thing when they deforest the area up there lake area and shit and you get lake area after the mid and others die of the plague the Namidians are oppressed by the fomorian conrad and mork uh each sam hain so this is where you get Halloween, okay? Samhain is a Gaelic festival, marking the end of harvest season, the beginning of winter, or dark half of the year. Now, on Samhain, they must give two-thirds of their children, two-thirds of their wheat, two-thirds of their milk to the Fomorians. So what the fuck are Fomorians? What are monsters doing with fucking children, milk, and wheat? Well, I presume they're fucking them. Sorry to say that. I don't think they're eating them. I think they're growing. I think they take the wheat and they take the milk for the children. They take the children, they fatten them up, 
and they impregnate them. And then they have more Fomorians. This tribute that the Numidians were forced to pay may be a dim memory of sacrifice offered at the beginning of winter, when the power of darkness and blight are in the ascent, in their highest, well, no, in their height. Basically, again, if you think about how spring is, spring starts slow, warms up into summer, and you deal with the heat of summer. The heat of summer is a lot more comfortable than spring for a lot of people. When you deal with the dark half of the season, the beginning of it is way better than the end where it's all winter. Again, when we're in January, it's snow everywhere. Where, where was the snow in December? Where was the snow in November? So it's more comfortable to be outside during this time than it is to be in January or February. So when this happens, the dark half of the year, they turn over their children and the food and this is really what Samhain is. They can sit there and give you it's a festival. Well, why are you having a festival with right after the festival? You got to give up your children and your food. So, no, something else is going on. So, then eventually it's going to lead to a treaty. When we get down to the Thalua de la Dan, all right. Um, now, nobody really talks about it right out. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to go over here to the Fomorians. <coughs> and even under the Fomorians, I don't think they're going to talk about it. Um, so we go off site and... We type in from Orions. We type in the word treaty. And it's going to come. The land of the Fomorians were a mix of various giants and giant kin races. So you see what happened? It's just like Babylon. You have one army, you take your army, you defeat the nearest army, and, you, and whatever's left comes into your army, and you become the Borg, and you go around defeating all these. Now you defeated seven, ten nations, and right now you say, I'm the greatest nation, I control these seven. Anytime I want, I can go with the other groups and I can beat them, and now you have been pushed into a metroplex. Where, where you're part of Babylon now. Now the people that just defeated you are saying you are now part of their empire. When we say come fight, you come fight or we burn you out just like we burned you out before. This is the same thing. If we went around burning out giants, the giants went to the edge of the land where they had a chance and that was what? Ireland. So this is the story that, uh, of Ireland and Britain when they were fighting giants to control the land, right? A wrestling match. And you can see they weren't really fighting giants. They were fighting giants that were mixed with humans, so they weren't that tall either. That's not saying they weren't tall, but you know what I mean. They were a little watered down. All right? Ha! Ah, pun! See people, right? Okay, so... The Fomorian supernatural portrays hostile means from the sea. So now we're starting to get it. It's the Dagda, right? It's a conflict. The conflict seems inevitable at first. The Dagda goes into the Fomorian camp to spy on them, and he offers a peace treaty. Anybody remember when Obama came on and said all treaties are still engaged? So Dagda spies on them, gets caught, offers up a treaty, the treaty is signed. There's a treaty of Dagda. All right, Mill 
and, and the only agreement. Now we see Mill right there, and if if we didn't know any better, we'd just be like, "What the fuck is Mill?" But then again, we know better because we start Mill of Spain. We know exactly who Mill is. So you see, they're not even trying to come straight out. I want you to understand when somebody goes into the got damn forest and they find a fucking cave and that cave goes some fucking where and something's on the other side of that cave and it sees you and you don't come back it's because you broke the fucking treaty the treaty that men that are in authority will not tell you about and you're gone and then 15 fucking youtubers make 15 different videos about how you went missing at this or that national park. So here we have Mile of Spain. Here under, let's get rid of this one. Let's go under, no, 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 we want. And here's where the miles comes in. And here's Mile of Spain, right? This is what we were just reading about, the Dula Dila Dan, how they all furball, how they all came in. And then here come the people to make the treaty. Excuse me. I thought I thought the other ones made the treaty. All right? But then here we go. Dogda comes in. Remember, Dogda was part of the Dula Dila Dan. But it's made during Mile, right? The agreement between the Tulula Dila Dan. So are there two agreements? Was the agreement with the Sulula de la Dan one agreement and the agreement with the Goth the second agreement? Hmm? Right? Also refers to the treaty between Dogda and his sons and right? Brian's name is Uar and it's Ulster dot UK. So it wouldn't be out there to think somebody else knew the treaty existed, wrote about it. There's that name of Jesus turned, right? A temporary peace treaty existed between the peoples and these giants. Brother to Dagda, king of the gods, to honor the peace treaty. Peace to the gods. <laughs> you mean the giants? What the, what the fuck is being going... What's going on, man? We already discovered these bitches are running one scheme on us and then we followed up to find that it was connected to another scheme. It was connected to Psalm 83. This is just a bunch of scheming people pretending we're just your neighbors. Right? And then their peoples don't know about Ireland. And why you're people who look like me don't be going that far nowhere. They don't go that far out of the city. But people look like the eleven nations that came here and stole all our shit. They just run around like this is their their yard. And then they when they when they go to the national parks, they see a closet. They go in the closet and they go missing. Have you ever seen it said spy? You ever sit there and you watching a video? And they catch a Bigfoot, and the, the Bigfoot is walking all funny and shit. This thing's trying to walk all funny, like, and trying to pretend he's just a tree. You ever think they have been receiving so many children and reproducing so much that they have run out of space underground and they are coming up out of ground and then guess what you get some land uh, on the edge of some forest and then you hear them calling each other all the time right? but there's been a treaty the whole time if you go in their territory they'll kill you but all kinds, you, you can't tell me all these hunters go to the woods and they ain't take a shot at these motherfuckers. They ain't going to kill them because they don't understand what's going on. These are, uh, smell that in the air? These are sulfur-based creatures. 
right? How do you kill a sulfur-based creature? Oh, um, you got to use silver. Ah, right? So expert hunter goes into the forest and fucking, right? All you find it is, is his gear. So he went up against one of those creatures and he didn't have no silver. So a $26 little cube of silver could have saved him if he could have stuck that thing up against any of his blood. Because when silver fucking touches uh, uh, sulfur, it oxidizes immediately. It, ch it changes. So that means an instant change happens inside the brain. So that makes sense to why. They always show a vampire movie, the silver touches the vampire, and he Im immediately freezes and starts crumbling to dust. Hmm? Sunlight, he burns to a crisp slowly, but touch him with silver. Fucking right, same thing with werewolves, right? Touch him with silver, and so then I went on this kick. See, because this isn't like you know, why aren't you broadcasting? Because I have nothing to fucking say, I'm still studying shit. And we broadcast up something every day just so there's something, and then you won't want to watch because you know it's all personality and no, no stuff in there. Uh, that's not what we're gonna do, man. I've got a family, I want to live so. Then I was researching this, and uh, I was like, okay, how do you get real silver bullets? And it turns out, unless you're going to study how to make bullets and start popping them out, nobody really makes silver bullets. There's like one place that makes silver bullets, but they charge you like fucking high-ass price just for like one bullet, you know? Um, but they claim it's functional. So, you know, I can't remember how much it costs just to fucking, and then you're going to test fire it, and then that's your one bullet. Yeah, that's, so then, you know, I started, I started using the old noggin, and when I was thinking, I was thinking, you know, it was a really good movie, Young Guns. And I thought about young guns. I like, took that shotgun and they loaded that shotgun up with nickels. And he pointed that shotgun down at him and he shot him and he, was, and he, and he, and he knew how much nickels it was. He was just say, I just shot him dead with two dollars full of nickels, right? Shit was cold blooded. So, uh, when I got into that, I was like, well, if they don't make silver bullets, like, you know, consecutively, like, what, what, what about silver for a shotgun? And then that's when I found that they make, uh, <clears throat> these silver pellets for shotgun. It's basically... You take like a weighted amount of silver and you don't put it in a shell. You just stuff it in the shotgun and then the shotgun blast will carry the silver out. So then I, then I started, well, how do they make these little silver pellets? And then they were like, oh, what you got to do is you got to pour hot silver on a screen and dip it in water real fast. And I'm like, how in the fuck did somebody figure this out? Who sat there and said, I need silver pellets? And then that's when I discovered there is a guy that makes silver shotgun shells to kill creatures. And then I then I said, this is the motherfucker that's been through it. He's been through it and nobody believes him. So he says, fuck it. I'm just going to make live ammo. Damn, I, I knew it, man. So I, I assume he bought some property and he started hearing those motherfuckers and he took a shot or two and it didn't phase him. And they probably they came beaking on his house and shit and he has so probably had a fucking necklace or something. Stuck it down the barrel, shot it, and that thing probably froze for a second and then fell over dead or turned to some kind of ash. You know, because it's fucking sulfur-based. Again, man, like... 
again, this isn't this is new for you. Maybe this ain't new for me. Uh, I just go silver and let's see it's all right there silver shotgun cell silver reacts to sulfur right <laughs> i was all over this Woo! right silver tarnish it when it combines right to formorian's blood excuse me forms silver in uh, silver sulfide so again if you had sulfur blood and then you were injected with silver all of a sudden it would turn to silver sulfide and then Again, your organs wouldn't be compatible to that. So that's werewolf, Bigfoot, Fomorian, anything that fucking, blah, 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 blah. You get what I'm saying? And so, and yeah, that's when I got into the silver, uh, silver shot, right? And you, you don't really, you, they're non-functional, right? They're just for show. And then you get precious metals, one ounce silver shotgun shell. Now we're fucking talking, but I don't want the precious metals. I need silver because precious metals does not turn uh, sulfur into right, silver oxide. Right, I'm saying that wrong, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> like, let's get it up on another channel, so I, another tab, so I can just say it back and forth. So silver all right, reacts with sulfur. It makes silver sulfide. So a sulfur bean cannot be anymore. So then that's when you get into the shot, right? Um, and you find out uh, that they just make these. It's just silver grains. And you can preload your ammo, right? You can just take a fucking, uh, look. With all, with all seriousness, you can spend a couple bucks on some silver, and you can buy some of those uh, bubble gum. Um, you know, you go to the store, they got the little 25 cent thing, you put the quarter in, you turn it, and they give you the, the, the little shell. Little, you know, they got the tiny shells, right? And whatever you can put something in, you can go and you can get fucking balloons you can put silver in the balloon and stick it right down in there with loaded shotgun on top of the shotgun shell and you just blast silver right into fucking monsters and again i don't know you i can't see who's watching this video this ain't about me and you this is about survival you have a chance that you didn't have before now you can always just buy a bunch of silver bracelets and every time you have a situation when you're out there you just take one of those bracelets off and have it ready in your left hand and you got your shot on and if you see an animal and you're trying to shoot that you shoot the animal but if that's not what you think it is and it keeps on moving you have the chance to load your gun with another round and then take your bracelet and put it right in there and point your silver bracelet right up and then you let it into them. Because again, when silver mixes with sulfur, it makes silver oxide. I'm under the impression that when they show you monsters destroyed, vampires and wolves in stupid TV shows, that it's actually closer to real than we think. So, and I went down and, you know, then it goes into silver shot is essentially created by pulling melted silver into cold water. Right? Like, why are you telling me how to make it? Like, you know, it's like, this is something they don't want to be a trade secret. You would have to ask why. This isn't. Mm. This isn't something that, oh, if you tell the world how to make this, they're going to go do it. It's used for a unique purpose. And you have to be really creative to find it because they're not being, and I'm not saying I'm re really creative, I'm just saying, they're not being forward with this. All right? I mean, and yes, there are, there is places that make uh, silver bullets.
werewolf defense line is what I was talking about before with their absurd pricing for one in bullet 150 bucks you get one bullet okay this is one round you see that shit that's functional okay you don't even need the jacket to be silver. You need the round that's going to leave to be silver. All right? But this purchase, $150, is one single round of live ammunition. Go and buy yourself some silver shot. Do yourself a favor. Pour in a couple pieces of silver. 5, 10, 15 on top of, uh, 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 I don't think it's going to jam. I think just like they show you in other movies, there's been enough hillbillies playing around with shotgun long enough to tell you what happens. How, this is how you jam a gun. This is, you know, this is how you clear a jam. Pouring something on top will jam it. Pouring something on top will not jam it. Putting peanut butter in your barrel, do this. Putting grapes in your barrel, do that. I'm sure every question anybody can ask is out there. So think about this because this treaty of Dacta, it exists. Is it still in effect? It doesn't even matter. You already know people go missing all the time. Them, all their shit. You know, toddlers that, that aren't able to fucking go a mile. You're told they're, they're gone. They're, they, they were found 12 miles. They were, they, were, they were found up mountains. Grown ass men wouldn't climb. You're told the amount of time it took... One person to get from here to there is impossible. So I encourage you to buy some silver shot. Because you already know I encourage you to go to the forest. Do not fear this shit, but do not be stupid. I want to thank Dia Dash. You made a great video. Led to uh, all this information. Um, it's one of these YouTubers that uh, have a great amount of uh, truth in the videos that I've seen, and not that many uh, views. So if you got some time and you see some of these titles you like. Uh, I, I encourage you to check them out. I have one of these titles up here. Symptoms of chemical poisoning are exactly the same complaints. I have that video up. I haven't even watched. I want to see that. Um, you see in here, there's a lot that I've checked out. We talked about one of our videos before uh, recently. But look, everybody. Just like I say on the phone uh, with, with the people that I talk to, um, every week that goes by, something new will be revealed. It is up to us to pay attention to these things. You see these a lot of these people I bring up, they're not connected to the Bible. They're not connected to the Most High. They do not respect the Israelites. They denounce the Israelites. They are not there for you. They call themselves truth this and truth that. They lie to your face. They make program this. They make program that for Israelites. And the whole time, they're Moors, they're Moabites. The Moabites act just like the Canaanites. The Israelites' promise is not for them. The Israelites' promise is for us. So again, again, people that say that they are the truth, they promote Moors, but sit there and say, oh, Israelite is a religion and I don't respect that. They're fucking liars. 
I sat there and I said, go and watch this so you can see it for yourself. So when your heart felt disheartened, that's the your affection for the truth being turned off when you're watching someone calling themselves, we don't compromise the truth at all. So that shows you the level of the deception that the daughters of Zion who have been carried away unto the arms of Moab, this is historically written in the Bible. You can see exactly how they look today. They show you they face. They show you they face on the screen. The same fucking color. They show you their hair on screen. The same fucking hair. They deny their heritage and promote the Moors. While the Moors come on screen and say, no, no, no. We've been lying to you the whole time. The Israelites' covenant and promise belongs to us. <laughs> so each time they do this, let me, let me look you right in the eye. What are you doing? I want you to remember, each time somebody comes on camera and starts lying to you, it should make you feel good inside. It should. Because at that point, you don't need to find a thousand books that have different little lines or paragraphs about your history, about God's promise to you. The actions of these individuals and their deceit should be enough to show you that you are so important. The whole world joins hand in hand in a lie to deceive you. Now remember, there's 12 tribes. They don't all look the same, but they kind of all look the same. Shall on. See you soon, brothers. See you soon, sisters. And we will also see our friends from these other nations that have assisted us every step of the way.